Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. MSNBC host Joanne Reed went all in against anti-abortion laws in the state of Missouri, where advocates say, in addition to other restrictions, pregnant women aren't allowed to get legally divorced. Let's watch. It's so nuts, Joy. It's yeah. nuts. And you've left off, Claire, that in your state, uh, it's illegal for a pregnant woman to get an abortion. So they've also gone after no-fault divorce. So if you're a pregnant and you're in a marriage with an abusive spouse, you can't even get a divorce once you become pregnant. You become the property of both your husband and the state. They have joint ownership of you in the state of Missouri. Uh, that is a slave state as far as being a woman is concerned, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and now, back when that was put into law, it was to try to hold people accountable for the babies they had fathered. But in this day and age, everybody needs to understand that what it does, it keeps a woman in a marriage that could be abusive just because she's pregnant, which is absolutely unacceptable. So what's going on here, Amber? What is the state of this law? I'm guessing that that is 100% not true. Um, I actually have not read whatever law she's referencing, but... uh, Needless to say, usually when they fear monger about women not having rights, that it's usually not the case. Um, what's there's, there's a broader theme here, though, of trying to fear monger around the reproductive rights issue, as they call it, because this is sort of their cash cow, their golden goose for mm-hmm. the November election. This is the only issue that Biden is actually out polling Donald Trump on. And there's been a couple of recent high profile cases in places like Texas and Louisiana, apparently now in Missouri, where they've accused the right of criminalizing miscarriage care, of trying to uh, make it so that women are are being killed when they get pregnant because they say that maternal mortality is uh, has a higher death rate than abortion. And there's so much misinformation surrounding the issue that I'm sure we'll get into, but um, I think it's important for people to understand that at the base of all this mm-hmm. is political gamesmanship. It's not actually we care about well, sure, women. But is that, un- I mean, is that ultimately unfair though? Because I mean, didn't uh, Republicans bring a case to try to get uh, the abortion drug no longer to be uh, to be sold? Um, over the counter, yeah, through over, the mail. Yeah. They just wanted women to have to go to a doctor to get a prescription. Well, I, okay, I did, that's putting up another, uh, another hurdle, uh, you know, not Every woman, young women seeking abortions might not have the, you know, to book an appointment, you have your parents find out about it or something like that. I, I would not be um, wanting to move in the direction of making that more difficult. Of making like abortion in general more difficult or just the abortion pill? The, the whole, I mean, if it's going to be legal, I don't know why it like, it, it should be that sh- if, if it is, if legally it should be your choice, I don't, I'm not going to put up more hurdles to doing it. You know, I, I generally think um, the voters of the state should decide this issue. And it, it's clear at this point, there's no like national consensus on what abortion policy would be. And my view is if voters in Kansas want it one way and voters in California want another, that's fine by me. But it, like uh, the, the abortion, the, the pill is just, a, is just like a product you would buy, and I don't, you know, similar to like virtually all other drugs, I don't want to put, I don't want to make it, um, I, I don't want to bring the government in it to tell people like what products you can buy. Okay, so the issue that's at the Supreme Court in the abortion pill case is that the FDA misrepresented the safety of the drug. And so women should have to see a doctor in person to get a screening when they determine that they're pregnant in order to be prescribed the pill, and then they should have some kind of follow-up care to make sure that they don't hemorrhage, which is exactly the complaint that people are having about a case in Texas, was that a woman actually took a pill that flushes the remaining tissue from a deceased fetus, and she ended up hemorrhaging because they actually prescribed her too many doses Mm -hmm. in a short period of time. Um, And they're saying that that's actually Republicans' fault because they passed a pro-life law. So with... uh, The abortion pill specifically, there's one very obvious reason why women should have to see a doctor in person. The only way to diagnose if you have an ectopic pregnancy is if you go in and get an ultrasound. You can't determine that at home. Mm -hmm. And the symptoms often feel very similar to actually having a miscarriage or an abortion. So again, a woman's not able to figure that out on herself. If you try to abort an ectopic pregnancy or leave it untreated, your fallopian tube will burst and you will die. So like all of this concern about women's health, I mean, I know you care about women. I'm saying the women on these <laughs> shows who are talking about women's health, but then they say, oh, we want to mail you an abortion pill. Like it's it's not serious to me because they, they don't know what they're talking about. Well, all right. But I mean, you are, you know, you're 
part of a conservative movement that wants to put more restrictions on a, on abortion. I mean, I know what opponents of abortion will say that, well, okay, if you think it's important to go see a doctor, fine, but the right is trying to, you know, make this, uh, this choice illegal across the board anyway. So like it's not, and then people will be seeking, you know, we, this is, it's kind of a, talking point, but I, there, I think there's absolute validity to it that if it's broadly criminalized, people will still pursue, uh, women will still pursue abortions. Not people, I'm not trying to use gendered correct language pregnant here. That people. I object to, not <laughs> pregnant people, women. But women will still pursue uh, abortion and it will just be under the, the very, the riskier um, conditions that you yourself are yeah, that's worried a, about. That's a, that's a common talking point as well. And it's not one that's been borne by evidence. There's really had, has been no difference in the abortion death rate mm -hmm. between places where abortion is criminalized and women see the so-called back alley abortions versus places where it's 100% legal. Um, it turns out that women actually, for the most part, don't seek back alley abortions, even in times before Roe v. Wade well, was decided by the Supreme Court. Well, they just go to a Supreme state court. where it is legal? Is that? Well, in the current landscape, yeah, totally that's what they would do. it was totally illegal across the board. Um, I, well, I mean, before we have statistics from before Roe v. Wade that just suggests that that's not the case, or mm -hmm. at least it's not going to happen in a significant amount like a lot of people suggest. But I think I'm more focused right now on the miscarriage claims because this is something that actually does affect women's health because the left lies and fear mongers and scares women that they can't go to a doctor and get care for a miscarriage because their doctor's not going to help them because they're afraid they're going to be prosecuted under a pro life law, which is 100% false. There is not a single pro-life law in the country that criminalizes miscarriage care. And anyone who compares a spontaneous abortion to an abortion that is started by some kind of drug or surgical procedure, a surgical abortion, is being completely dishonest. Those are two entirely different things. And their treatment options, by the way, are, are completely different for them. But what if it's unintended? What if, okay, let's say I believe you, no law is specifically prohibiting that at all, but, you know, the wording is vague. A doctor say, you know what, there's too much potential liability here because they've just they've just proposed this and they, you know, they don't even know the extent. I mean, our, our, many of our legislators are not doctors or experts or smart people in any sense on both sides of the political spectrum. You know, what if this just causes various medical professionals to go, you know what, this is, I, I, it, it doesn't specifically criminalize this, but it could be read this way by someone and I'm just not going to offer this anymore. This is using one of those like legislative unintended consequences. Well, I mean, if there is a law like that, then I guess they should clarify the language. But mm -hmm. as far as I know, every pro-life law that I've looked at explicitly says this is for abortions that are not spontaneous. Spontaneous abortion is the sort of medical term for a miscarriage. And in Texas specifically, when there was this recent viral story about a radio host who said his wife almost died because of the pro-life law, Texas's law actually says in it that this does not apply to a mm. case where a woman needs to get uh, a dead baby out of her uterus and needs care for that. Um, so what actually happened is he went to a hospital. The normal care for a miscarriage, by the way, a lot of people don't understand this, is actually wait and see. It's not to go through a surgical remove or get a pill. Those are actually sort of the backup plan. 60 to 80 percent of miscarriages are remove themselves from the body naturally. It's obviously an emotional and horrible process. It sucks, but the reason why doctors do that wait and see method is because that's associated mm. with lower rates of infection. Um, it's actually the drug that is quite similar to the abortion pill and surgical removal, a DNC is what it's called, that have higher rates of infection. So they say, well, if you don't give us the DNC or the pills, then we're all gonna have sepsis and we're all gonna mm -hmm. die. It's actually the opposite. The wait and see method is actually the safest. This woman went in, uh, didn't wanna wait. It's up to two to, to six weeks that it can take for all of the tissue to come out of the body naturally. Mm -hmm. She didn't wanna wait. Her husband took her to uh, an urgent care clinic was upset that they didn't do DNCs there because most urgent care clinics, as I'm sure you know, don't do sur surgeries. Well, I mean, could it be that even if it's slightly higher risk, it's you get it over with faster and that's the argument want, for it. Some places uh, and women want to be done. I some mean, it's places such a traumatizing. Well, let me finish because some places okay. offer that. Yeah. An urgent care doesn't do surgeries. Yeah. They actually advised her to schedule a DNC with an OBGYN, which is the normal procedure. This is an outpatient surgery where you actually schedule it in advance. It's an elective surgery. Um, I shouldn't have said outpatient, it's an elective surgery. You schedule it in advance. And a lot of doctors will present that as an option for women, but they like to try the wait and see method first. So when they were unhappy with the fact that the urgent care clinic didn't provide DNCs, again, they don't do any surgeries there. They won't do a carpal tunnel surgery 
or whatever else. It's not just abortion related or miscarriage related care. They don't even prescribe you antibiotics. They'll say, right. come back in two weeks if you yeah, feel Yeah, put sick. ice on yeah. it and see yeah. how you feel. Sure. So they demand, they went to a different emergency room, demanded mm-hmm. the pill to flush the uh, tissue out, took two doses of it. Apparently it still wasn't working, which that can take up to 72 hours as well. Went back and demanded another uh, dose of the pill, which you're not really supposed to take three within a 24 hour period. The max is supposed mm-hmm. to be two. They, she took the third one and that was when she bled out. And then this guy holds his hands up and says, it's the pro-lifers, they did this. Mm-hmm. That's what's so frustrating to me. These people literally just lie with impunity about the pro-life movement. Oh, we want women to die. We don't care about women. It's all fake. It's all fake. Mm. Oh, very informative. Tell us what you think in the comments. And please like, share, and subscribe. We'll have more free media next week.